Mm. The dough is so good. Oh, I'm so happy I discovered this. Hello everybody. So I'm going to show you guys how I switched up my cookie recipe entirely without using butter anymore. Now I am using a mixture of vegetable oil spread and I looked at the ingredients and it does have a little bit of milk in it but it's made with like milk, soy, vegetable glycerin, and a whole bunch of other things but it's still way healthier than butter. And the reason I'm cutting butter out of my diet, or at least for the most part, is because it really, I've noticed, messes with my skin. I'm trying to eat healthier and the first way I started doing that is to, first of all, I've done this before. You use coconut oil instead of using butter in your recipes. Now, I know it might sound crazy, especially if you're not a coconut or coconut oil fan. It has kind of a strong taste. And for me, it's almost hard to take coconut when it's inside of things, especially if it's overpowered. You can definitely overpower with coconut oil. But with this recipe, mix half and half of the vegetable oil mixture. The other half is coconut oil. And the problem that you run into with this is the coconut oil is hard as a rock, at least the kind that I was able to buy. That's no problem, you can still use that. And also the butter mixture that I have is, well, the fake butter mixture that I have is also not melted completely. And when you're making recipes like this, I showed in my last video, you melt down the butter or you let it sit out so that it's at least room temperature so that you can stir it into your dough with no problem. But if you try to stir in cold butter or this rock hard coconut oil, it's not going to work like at all. What I did was I melted the butter and the coconut oil together in a double broiler, which basically just means you put whatever it is you are wanting to heat up safely into a container that can handle heat and you put that into a pot with water into it. And then you just let it double broil and warm up slowly and you stir it around and it turns into this liquidous formation. It's like, it kind of looks like butter. I'm going to show you guys my chocolate cookie recipe today. As I've said before, you start out with mason plus. It makes things go a lot smoother and it makes things a lot cleaner. So you've got six tablespoons of white sugar and six tablespoons of brown sugar. I bought the darkest brown sugar that was available and it is so glorious and look at the chunks that come out from my tablespoon. It's all chunky because I let it sit out for a few minutes but it'll be fine once I let the oil soak into it which is what we're going to do now. I will say I've experimented a lot in the past with recipes baking wise and I have discovered that basically you can replace butter in recipes with a lot of things, including pumpkin puree, bananas, a lot of other just vegetables and fruits that, like applesauce, a lot of people use applesauce in place of eggs or in place of butter in certain recipes. It all just depends on the altitude you live in, whether or not it's gonna work, whether or not it's just going to turn into a, not even a baked good sometimes it just won't turn out right sometimes it will turn out really well i tried to use pumpkin puree once and it wasn't the best honestly pumpkin is a very weird substance and as you may know if you're a baker canned pumpkin is not actually pumpkin it is a type of like i can't remember what the story is but they basically bred like a squash or something with a pumpkin to give to consumers in cans in large quantities. So it's not technically a full pumpkin when you buy pumpkin puree. That aside, it also doesn't taste great when you buy pumpkin puree in the can. You, in order to get that pure pumpkin taste you get in a pumpkin pie, you need to have spices, you need to have a lot of flavorings, vanilla, nutmeg, other things. Without any of those, trying to use pumpkin puree in a recipe, you want it to add almost no flavor. When you're using butter, butter doesn't add much flavor in baking, neither does, you know, coconut oil. When you're using pumpkin puree, it's got such a strong, bland taste, almost potatoey taste. And so it ruins baking recipes in that sense. Although I do want to like try experimenting with it a bit more just to see because I like the taste of pumpkin pies and I want to see if it's 
Like if you could use pumpkin puree and bananas in place of butter for everything in baking, how amazing would that be? It'd be so healthy. So it's not gonna mix together like you want it to, like butter would with sugar. What's happening now is the coconut oil is kind of just separating because there's a lot of it. That's okay. So just wanna mix it as much as you can. Then we're gonna add our vanilla and it's just a half a teaspoon of vanilla. By the way, this is my cookie recipe, halved, because like I said in my last video, I don't like to make full recipes since I am single. I just half my recipes when I'm baking for myself. We've got our vanilla and then we've got just one egg. Then you wanna whisk your egg in. Ah, see with the egg, it came together a bit more like it normally would. It's actually really pretty. So I wanted to tell you guys, I was worried about the coconut oil not working in this recipe, but it makes it the smoothest dough ever. Not only that, it then makes it the smoothest cookie ever. And I can't wait for you guys to see it. It's beautiful. Also, it makes it so it's almost impossible to get a raw inside like I did in the last video. I kind of had a bit of a raw inside. I don't regret it. I like cookies like that. But with this, the batter comes out so even and so, I don't know if using this word is right, but plush. I want to use that word to describe these cookies because it comes out like uniform and beautiful and like silky. So now we're going to add our dry ingredients and then it will be done. So we've got one cup of flour. In the original recipe, it is half a cup of cocoa, but I realized I didn't have half a cup of cocoa. I had about a fourth of a cup. So I'm using flour for the rest and it should be fine because cocoa is a very strong flavor anyway and when I first experimented with this recipe and creating it um, I actually used way too much cocoa and realized that you don't need to use that much cocoa to make stuff chocolatey so I'm wondering if maybe this will work out perfectly fine with just a fourth a cup of cocoa anyway now we have half a teaspoon of salt and then one teaspoon of baking soda you do not want to forget your baking soda and your salt and then I'm going to get rid of the whisk because you try to whisk your dry ingredients. It is just a mess. <laughs> it becomes very difficult. So I'm going to fold in my dry ingredients. And this takes a while usually. Starts off looking almost impossible. Just work it in. We have our dough. So first of all, look at how chocolatey it is with just one fourth of a cup of cocoa. And also look at how silky smooth that is. Like it is absolutely the most beautiful dough ever. It doesn't like stick to you. It's crazy how coconut oil changes this recipe so very much. Look at it like move. And then it doesn't stick to me. <laughs> like I love the coconut oil. I'm so happy I discovered this. I actually did this like last year when I was baking, but then I lost touch of it because coconut oil is so expensive. I should have mentioned that earlier in this video. I apologize. So now I'm going to put these into a baking. I use a muffin tin for my cookies, as you might know, to make extra thick cookies. So I'm going to fill those up and then cook it for seven to nine minutes. As I discovered in my last video, you might want to do it a little bit longer if you're using a muffin tin like I am, because they're so thick, you want to get that center cooked. So maybe 10, 11 minutes if you're going to use a muffin tin like I do. Mmm, the dough is so good. I'm going to eat this dough. I'm going to stop myself. This dough is also so much easier to just put in your hand, make a dough ball with. Boom. Boom. And if you're vegan, you can always just use an egg substitute and this recipe will be vegan. Use some other fake mixture of butter that you guys have because I'm pretty sure the butter that I showed has, it has milk protein in it, it said, so. Today is New Year's Eve. Just trying to cheer myself up, man. Look how uniform it comes. Like, I just love it. It's so clean and shiny. Okay, oven. A little longer than a few minutes later. Okay, 
here is the final product. It is wonderful. It's huge, like a little muffin. And then it's still pretty warm, so I'm gonna get some pullback. It's not, it's probably not coming off cleanly because I don't have any spray anymore. I need to go buy more, so I just put it in there. But it's actually staying together surprisingly well, sort of. And then I'm gonna break it open for you guys. Oh, yes. Mm. It's almost better with coconut oil. Since I didn't use like full coconut oil, there's still a slight butter taste, but you also get a little slight coconut oil taste. Oh my goodness. It's, it's almost got a brownie quality to it. It is so soft and smooth. And that center is like cooked fully through, but it's still so soft and mushy. Mm. This is by far my favorite recipe ever. I actually named it after Julian from Jenna and Julian of Jenna Marbles channel, if you didn't know. She's one of, I, she is my favorite YouTuber. I will just leave it at that. And Julian, close second. But Julian has a channel also where he cooks and he bakes a lot. And well, he tries to, he's not really great at it, but I love it so much. It's called Aries Kitchen. And he once attempted to make Oreos and it came out kind of like this, a very thick chocolate cookie. And then he put cream in the center, which I haven't gotten that far yet, but it just reminded me of Julian because of how thick I make my cookies. So I named it Julian Inspired Oreo Cookies. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I really wish you could try it. It is so magnificent and beautiful. And I'm gonna show you guys a close up shot of the inside because it's so beautiful. Whatever you're doing, have a good day, good night, good evening. Thank you so much for watching. Give this video a like, it would mean so much to me. And subscribe if you're not, because I'm gonna be doing a lot more videos, sometimes even like daily. So to keep up to date on my stuff, you're gonna wanna subscribe and hit that bell. I know it's weird to say that, but it's the only way that YouTube will know that you wanna see my stuff. So please do it. And yeah, thanks for watching. Bye. Why did I say that?